Hallelujah. May the peace of God be with you all. By God's grace, we just finished our first meeting. And it pleases the Lord that as we worship with my brother here, Pastor Ade and our sister, and then all of you. I'm delighted that when they were assigning the heads of the church to minister, this is the place that the Lord has brought me. Because I've been longing to visit our dear brother and all of you. We are going to give highlights on the theme for the church for year 2023. But before that, I want to ask, I want to ask, what is the theme of the church for the year 2022? The theme, the general theme for COP in the year 2022. Because there, there must be a connection. Yes, if you know, just let me see you by hand. All right. Then I will have to ask, call someone's name and ask. But before that, I have my daughter here, Christiana, and then uh, my son, James McKeown, is here, and then my driver, uh, Champon, is also here. Right, so let me ask. Yeah, sister. Yes, you. Where in, in yellow? Yeah. What's the team for 2022? Yeah. So you may pass it to your next. Pass the microphone to your next. Uh huh. Equipping the church as an army to possess the nation. Okay. Good. That's very good. Equipping the church as an army to possess the nation. You may want to take the microphone from here. Thank you very much and God bless you. The theme for 2023 is repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations. Repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations. And we can say it in Akan as Yerishe Onyami Asafo Sorry, Yerishe Asafo Numudin Yerishe Asafo Numudin Na anya nsunsan so kese wo aman mu. Yerishe asafo numu din. Na anya nsunsan so kese kese wo aman emu. Now let's say it in English and then we try if we can say it in our can. One, two. Repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations. Let's say it. Then let's try if we can say that conversion. Yerisha asafunumu din na anyan sunsuansuwa kese wo amaimu. One, two. I mean, so can we be upstanding if we can to say it once so that it will stick to our minds? One, two. Ah, okay. Yeah, let's say it again. Another account says that 
Yere she asafu no mu din na nya nsunsuanso kese wo aman mu. Let's go. Amen. May we take our seats. So the other languages, they are doing a translation. Sometimes it's very difficult to translate into the local language. Even this one, some people are uh, contending that there are some missing words or so. So they will go and fine tune it, and then they will communicate to the church public and in the other languages. So we want to take the first scripture reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter, 9, chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20. And what we are doing this morning is to share with you the rationale behind the year 2023 team. The rationale. We want the church public to understand the reasons, the purpose for the theme that we have as a church in the year 2023. So because of that, in our studies, we want all of us to participate. If we are to ask a question, then we will ask. If we are to read together, then we read together. And if you are to comment, then you comment. So we want it to be participatory. So as we go through this, we want every member of the church to understand it very well. So that when you go to explain it to any other person elsewhere, you will be able to do it and do it well. So let's take the first scripture reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, and then we go to the verse 20. So let us all read together from the New International Version. Let's read together. Our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes. Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Amen. Now, let me take it alone. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes. Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. And then the Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says that, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Amen. So as I've already said, we are to reposition the church for maximum impact in the nations. We will start explaining this by talking about the vision 2023. We are all aware that our church has a direction. We have a guide, something that is guiding us, all the church members, where we want to get to. So the five-year vision for the church, that's the vision 23, has been expressed in the overarching team, Possessing the Nations, which aims at influencing every sphere of society with kingdom values, and principles. The overall goal of this vision is a church where members go to possess their nations by transforming every worldview, thought, and behavior with values, principles, and lifestyle of the kingdom of God, and thereby turning many people to Christ. I have told you that what we are doing today is not necessarily to to preach, but we want to understand, every member of us want to understand our direction. When I came here in the morning, we visited the Sunday school, and when we came to the, 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 the teens, or those who are close to the things, 
or the things. We were trying to ask them to find out, tease out from them to find out about the Possessing the Nation's Agenda and the Vision 2023. And you realize that uh, most of them do not even uh, have an idea about it. Just as when I was asking about the, uh, the theme of the church for the year 2022. But I am quite aware that we've been teaching it and explaining it. Uh, the ministers, the pastor has been teaching it. And then on Pen TV, social media, these things are all over. So I can say with authority that for now, no member of the church can make a claim that the theme of the church and the vision 2023 and overarching theme, which is the Possessing the Nation's Agenda, is not privy to it, except that we have not been able to perhaps make a conscious effort to relate to the vision. So what we are doing today, we want to go back to take some aspects of it, and then we come to understand why we are supposed to reposition the church. What kind of impact are we expecting? And when we read this, we say that we aim at influencing every sphere of society with kingdom values and principles. So it tells us that the kind of impact that we want to make on the nations and on our society is to influence the society, is influence our sphere, uh, make an impact in our sphere of influence. And when we're doing the Bible studies, we're talking about the lies and all these things. And Pastor there was relating it to where we work and then wherever we find ourselves, we should be able to um, demonstrate Christian values there because these are principles that are embedded in our faith as Christians. And we should be very careful not to go out of it or move away from it. The vision 2023 has been summarized into 25 commitments. But in these 25 commitments, we can also sum them up in three areas. That is one, to achieve, uh, no, to equip members of the church with the required um, resources. We are to equip ourselves. When you look at the screen, you will see that the expectation is that some aspect of the vision, we are supposed to achieve them now. That is a short-term achievement, and there's some, the medium-term, and there's some long-term. So the vision is uh, looking into the future as well. And it is expected of us that some aspects of the vision, like us, we have a lot of us as young people, we will get ourselves equipped, and after the adults or the leadership, current leadership is gone, we will be able to raise a generation that will also continue to impact their society with kingdom values and principles. The truth is that when we talk about kingdom values and principles, they do not have expiring dates they, at all. So it is not that old. It's just about the 2023 and let the 2023 comes. The moment it comes, then this kind of possessing the nation's team elapses. No, it doesn't have expiring date. So every member of the church who put it at the back of his mind or her mind that we are going to get ourselves equipped, that is the A, equipping members of the church with the required resources. What are the required resources here? It could be sound doctrine, sound biblical teachings. It could be resourcing ourselves uh, physically, uh, psychologically, spiritually, and then socially so that we will mass up all these things and then we will be able to use it to transform our society. But you see that equipping members of the church, the equipping of the members take place in the local assembly. So yeah, the local assembly is very, very important for us as a church because that is the equipping center. And our chairman, the chairman of our church, Apostle Eric Nyemiche, keeps repeating that 
The local assembly is an equipping center, it's a training center. It is a place that members must come to experience the fullness of God in their lives. So the local assembly is where we, we have to do prayer meetings. We, we pray, we meet and pray. So if we are want to talk about all the aspects of the, the, the areas of development of us as Christians, then let's take the spiritual development. It's the local, what goes into our spiritual development? Learning of God's word, applying God's word to ourselves as we're doing today during the Bible studies session. It is the local assembly that we come to do the Bible studies. It's the local assembly that we come to receive sound biblical teachings. Sound biblical teachings, then we take it home. It's the local assembly that we come to learn how to do uh, devotions. It's the local assembly that we, we, we come to learn how to uh, give to, towards the advancement of God's kingdom. It's the local assembly that we come to learn how to fellowship together. So the local assembly is very, 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 very important. That's why the Bible says that we should not stop meeting together as some people do. So it means there are some people who do not want to come together to meet in fellowship in Christ. But for us as Christians who want to take after the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to uh, recognize the role that the local assembly plays in our spiritual development. So in the Church of Pentecost, if you are not, do not associate with the local assembly, if you don't have an assembly, it means you are not a member of the church. And as we go through the teachings and the process, says you will get to know all these things, but not today. Today we are giving the rationale, rationale behind the, the team. During the health meeting, I made a presentation by the kind courtesies of our dear chairman and the leadership of the church. I was asked to make a presentation on uh, visitation in the local assembly. And we realized that in the Article 24, Article 24 of our Constitution, subsection 1 and 2, it says that the membership of the church begins at the local assembly. And then the adult membership begins after, begins uh, once a person attains age 13. Because once you attain age 13, you receive water baptism. So that time the person assumed to be uh, an adult member of the church. And then those classified as the children's ministry or Sunday school, that is from the first day of the person's age to age 13. So, uh, of, of course, it will end, terminate around 12. Because once the person gets 13 years, then the person is, receives water baptism. So, both those we see as the Sunday school and then those we see as adults of the adult membership of the church, they must all have local assembly. So we don't want to see people who are localists, localists, but they still claim that they are members of the church. So if you are a, if you are a member and then you are moving, relocating to another place, you are supposed to see your presiding elder through the presiding elder to the district pastor so that a transfer card is issued. And then the moment you get to where you are going, then you have to also report yourself and then give your transfer card to your receiving um, or your destination, the receiving church there. So the local assembly is very, very important. So the vision 2023 could be summed up in this three. That's why we are saying that equipping members of the church with the required resources. Equipping members of the church with the required resources. Then the second one is strengthening and realigning existing institutions and structures of the church to serve as implementation units and to provide the enabling environment for the achievement of Vision 2023. In other words, for the achievement of possessing the nation's agenda. In other words, for the achievement of our commitment to transform every sphere of society 
with kingdom values and principles. Something that I've already told you that it doesn't have an expiring date. Our commitment to transform uh, every sphere of society with kingdom values and principles. I am telling you that that aspect doesn't have an expiring date. So the vision 2023 of the church, we have named it a vision 2023, but put it at the back of your mind that the possessing the nation's agenda of the church doesn't expire. Oh, the army is not very healthy. It doesn't expire. So we are always on the move. And you should prepare yourself to understand the fact that we are always on the move to grab the nations for Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And as long as Jesus Christ tarries, as long as Jesus Christ tarries, the grabbing of the nations for Christ, influencing the, the workplaces for Christ, influencing our families for Christ, influencing our places of abode for Christ, influencing any sphere. When we talk about sphere of influence, what we mean is that wherever you are, Christ must reign. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So our church members should understand this and get it very clear that wherever you are. So implementing units, that is why this aspect where we will learn all those things. We have the uh, home cells, we have the Bible study groups, we have the squads, the squads that we were teaching and then this year we will repeat it so that the members of the church will come together and, and be in groups and be in groups, units so that each unit has a responsibility that will be assigned to the unit and then they have to be prepared, equipped and then unleashed so that they will go and, and work for God. Amen. So we want everyone in our repositioning, we want every person in the church to understand that you must belong to a squad. You must belong to a unit because we have a commitment. So uh, that strengthening and realigning existing institutions and structures of the church to serve as implementation units and to provide an enabling environment for the achievement of the vision 2023. So it's very, very important for the, in other words, for the achievement of possessing the nations for Christ. And then the third aspect is transforming society, sending our members out as channels through which God's divine resources will flow to meet the needs and helplessness of our society and uh, partnering with governments for community and national transformation. So when you see us doing a environmental care campaign, when you see us doing a peace campaign, when you see us getting ourselves involved in preparing, um, building uh, prisons so that those to ease congestion and also transform the lives of the people there because we are talking about transforming every sphere of society. So the sphere of society could be defined from uh, various perspectives. So when you see us getting ourselves involved in those things, it resonates with what we have committed ourselves to as a church. That's the uh, impacting the nations, impacting and transforming every sphere of society. And then what we are saying, we want every member, you see, these things that we are talking about, it is not the Church of Pentecost headquarters that we are talking about. The emphasis uh, is on the local church. Because that is where we have the members. So when we talk about a church, we are not talking about, oh, Kotobebi, Kokomremle, Kokomremle Church. Then we, who is actually the Kokomremle Church? Who is the Kokomremle Church? It is you. So when we, are, we see the word, we keep uh, using the word church, 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 then it is not about brick and mortar, but it is about the people, the very people that the Lord has called into the church. And then you should also put these things at the back of your mind that in the vision 2023, uh, we have, been, we have uh, been taught that the church, in other words, you, have a dual responsibility. Dual responsibility. That is, uh, we are called from amongst the people to serve God and then also to serve humanity. So every one of us has this responsibility. The vertical responsibility that goes to God 
and then the horizontal responsibility. So the dual purpose of the church is also something that is very important for every member of the church to understand and then make sure that he implements it. So the implementation units of the church must understand the dual purpose of the church. The vertical responsibility that we have towards God by working in God's kingdom and then making sure that the kingdom is expanded. The kingdom of God prevails over any other kingdom in this world and then also serving humanity. Serving humanity, the horizontal purpose of every one of us. So the vision 2023 we, we started in 2019, which was, I will build my church. That was the theme for 2019. Then we came to um, a, a, a glorious church to possess the nations. Then we came to a glorious church revived to possess the nation. And then equipping the church as an army to possess the nations. And then now we are repositioning the local church for a maximum impact. And our chairman, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost, uh, during the 2022, when he was launching it, the, giving the rationale behind, I want to read it so that we can reflect on it. From these themes, the church has been made to appreciate her dual responsibility and the call to build a glorious church, a church which is a radiant and without a stain or wrinkle, a church which is revived, holy and blameless, a church whose testimony will be credible before the watching world. These things, without doubt, have been drawn as many steps forward towards our overall goal. Having come this far, I believe it is now time to prepare to unleash the church into the world and bring the desired effect in the various spheres of the society. The church enters the world in two fronts. First, as an army in an enemy's territory, which calls for putting on every available defensive mechanism for battle, and second, as an agent or ambassador of the kingdom of God who goes into the world with the values and principles of the kingdom, such as the principle of work and the dignity of labor, service, respect for all, honesty, kindness, love, faithfulness, truthfulness, forgiveness, contentment, humility, integrity, in word and deed, and moral uprightness to generate the desired transformation. That's Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the, uh, 2022, when he was launching the, this. So we may move on quickly and then uh, repositioning the local church as a tactical unit. So all what we are saying is that the local church should be organized very well. So those of you in the musical team understand that you are going to use the music to impact society. First of all, to equip yourself so that you qualify before the Lord and then also through the ministry, you impact society. The IT department should also do the same. Every, everything that you do in the church, understand that you are equipping yourself to impact society. So those that take, the, the things that take place in the four corners of our church buildings and the, those that we are also supposed to do so that society will also benefit from our uh, uh, Christian values and principles is very, very important. The local church will then be more vibrant, a serious threat to the enemy. You know, the, the more we equip ourselves as a local church, then the enemy also is threatened and as a denomination our greatest resource is our members now we we the the year 2023 vision uh, or team the apostle paul what he was doing is that he was very happy about the thessalonian church and then what he was saying is that my glory my joy is the numbers is the church that we have established so the apostle is trying to say here that his greatest resource is the work that he has done in uh, Thessalonica and then also in Colossae. So here, because of the numbers that we have, the import is that our greatest joy is you. Our greatest joy is the human resource. Unlike you go to a place 
and then you see that uh, someone will come to church and when you go to some other places I was watching something on the social media when a minister goes to the church and then he calls his church members like the IT department as they are seated here so that they will project the number of cars that he has and then they will project the houses they will project the physical infrastructure that they have so you could see that you could see a church which delights in material things but for us we delight in the fact that the lord is using us to bring people to into his kingdom Amen. hallelujah Amen. so we want to reposition our way of thinking re realign our way of thinking so that whenever we see the numbers in the church we see that the lord has been gracious to us because we will take we will glorify god for helping us to get people in his kingdom that is our joy that is our joy so during the days of crisis in the history of our church reverend james McHugh will always tell, tell our forebears that you go and bring the people go and bring the people and in those days we did not have church buildings as big as this and people were worshiping on the trees and this but McHugh was not worried he would tell them that go and bring the people when the people come they will build that was his missionary philosophy go and bring the people the moment you bring the people the people are going to work especially if you have the people and you equip them that is why we are emphasizing on the local assemblies equipping because if we are not also intentionally and consciously and effectively equip the people that we bring in the local assembly the people will also come, they will not also know what to do. So we will sing and dance and dance and dance and dance and everybody will say, oh, today, uh, when, we, when the church service was fine. Oh, you see the way the sister was singing, she sang very well. Oh, today the church, and just like that. But the truth is that we have dual responsibility to serve God, make sure that the kingdom of God is expanded and then at our instance, and then also make sure that we impact society. So for these things, as we move through, put it at the back of your mind. So we are very happy that the greatest resource is our numbers. And it is in their strength, we also find strength. So our numbers, as we come, we should be able to make ourselves available to pay tight, to tight to the glory of God, so that we'll be able to mobilize resources that will be used for God's kingdom. So these things are very, very important. Our, our time is up, but I've taken time to explain this because today's service is a special service. It's a service that affords us an opportunity to explain something that we are all going to commit ourselves to for the whole year. That's why I'm saying that it is necessary, it does not necessarily meant for preaching, but rather to explain why we are supposed to reposition ourselves to be able to make this maximum impact so that uh, we will go and do exploits the slides and everything have been given to our dear brother and I think as time goes on, we will have this opportunity to explain more to us, but bear in mind that the local church is a very important thing, uh, place for us to come, learn and those of our members who do not come to church service says, let's keep advising them and let's participate in everything about the local church so that we will get ourselves equipped and they go to make an impact in society. Let's be on our feet as we are going to pray and commit our local church here into the Lord's hands that God will help us, God will establish his presence here and then anybody who comes here will come and learn, get himself or herself equipped and then you go and do a prayer. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Pray, pray, let's commit our church into the hands of the Lord. Let's commit this church into the hands of the Lord. Let's add the Holy Spirit to help us. Grant us grace to grow. Grant us to go out there to bring more members. Grant us the strength and the wisdom to nurture them 
with the word of God for them to grow. Sorry, church of God. Apostle told us that we, it is not the brick and mortar. It is us. It is us. We are the church. So if God says that he's building his church, it is us. We are the people he's building. We want to commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord. That we come malleable. Sometimes God wants to do something with us, but we resist that. We want to pray that the Holy Spirit will help us so that whatever the Lord wants to do with us, he's able to do it. We are able to avail ourselves. That we are able to avail ourselves. Pray. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. The Spirit of the living God, help me to avail myself, to avail myself to all this that we are supposed to go through, to all this that we are supposed to learn. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us, Lord. Pray, pray. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. That will be able to avail yourself. That will be able to avail yourself for you to go through all of this. For you to be taught. For you to be taught. For you to understand. For you to understand. For you to stand as an enemy of God. For you to go through this so that you be a strong, a strong church. You want to build a strong church. You want to build a resilient church. want to pray that wherever we are sent, wherever we go, we'll be able to make impact. If you go to a business where they are making losses, because of you, they must succeed. They must make profit because of you. Things must turn around. Things must change. If you go to a place where what, what they do there is negative things, that does not help. You must send positive vibes there. Yes. You must change things. You must make maximum impact. You must make an impact wherever you go. Positive impacts there so that they will know that Christ lives in you. And then you are there to transform the place to be a better place. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Lord, as I move out today, let your spirit help me. Wherever that I go, wherever that I go, whatever that I do, let me make a maximum impact. Let me make a maximum impact. Let me, make, let me transform the place with kingdom values and principles. This kingdom values and principles that does not expire. Oh, Lord our God. 
You may take your seats. Let's all be silent before the Lord. Before we ask our Mama Mata to pray with us, I want you to think about what the Lord has spoken to us through Apostle. That you are supposed to make impact on earth. You are supposed to realign yourself and understand what is going on in the church. As we ask our Mama Mata to pray with us. Edia no nyam aye yi ene na ase me de ma wase fo urade wo wo hu yen na wo do yen na wo do yen moroso na wo yi yen na wa ye ya de hie wa me ye hu se e wo se ye kwepe ye hu e wo locus mu ye ti me de ko outside ye bom pa ye wo yesu christo na ze tu di mu outsider Ye beti ni adawu Kristo meni yedi a kira fofro nya me honhom pimfa ye mu biom ye hia wo mo nwosra ye hia wo mo dom nya me honhom di hini wo ye mu ye bompa ye wo Yesu Kristo di mu anu pe ma wo nwosra enye ka se wo ye nso adifu wo nwosra a ye di ye wa sori mu adwuma ewrade Yesu hwie ku ye nso na fele ye nya me honhom fele ye biom be bibiara ya ye mre be bibiara ya to sini ye hia wo mu aho den ye hia wo mu nwosra odum enye kase wo ye nso ye bom pa ye wo yesu christo din mu ye ja loka ye hwe nsa ye hia wo nyame mu dum e wo loka yi mu ye hia wo nyame mu hira e wo loka yi mu ye bom pa ye ye ja member se wo loka yi mu nyina hwe nsa won sa no adwuma won plans are all planning Yo bibia ra die si ne ni so e rade Yesu dumo won na shi she won ye bom pa ye se rade Yesu bue bue apune bi wo wo mu atutum wo wo abra bo mu a Yesu di mu bue apune na ma won won destiny Jesus ye bom pa ye se rade mo bibia ra destiny enye kra be hwe en she wo Kristo no nyam ye da wa se se wa be sra ya no pe ye she wo no nyam we thank you god we thank you for good things you have done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. I'd like us to stand, stretch forth our hand towards Apostle, Mama, and the children, and bless them. Please bless them. Bless. Oh, bless them, bless them, bless them. Amen.